Welcome to the Brigham Young University Family History Library webinar series. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Braden Knutson. I'll be your host for this webinar. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to remind everyone we've got a couple of polls down at the bottom. If you'd like to let us know where you heard about today's webinar and um, where you're listening from today, that would be great. And as we go through some of our announcements that we have. Um, so our next webinar will be on um, Tuesday, January 17th at 9.30 in the morning, um, Mountain Daylight Time. And that webinar will be by um, James Tanner. You can see the announcements down at the bottom right of your page. And also Rootstack is coming up. Um, that will be on February 8th through the 11th at the Salt Lake, um, the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. And if you want to register for that, um, we have a link on our BYU um, Family History Library main webpage where you can register for that event. It would be great. We'll be there so you can come check us out. Um, today we'll be pleased to hear from James Tanner who will be giving a presentation titled Blogging and Social Networking for Genealogists. James Tanner has a bachelor's degree in Spanish and a master's degree in linguistics from the University of Utah. He received a Juris Doctor degree in law at Arizona State University. He served for two years as an intelligence analyst for the U.S. Army and 39 years as an Arizona trial attorney. He has previously owned a retail computer business and an Apple Macintosh software company. James has over 35 years experience in genealogical research and is an avid blogger of Genealogy Star blog and rejoice and be exceeding glad. He served for 10 years as a missionary at the Mesa, Arizona Family Search Library and is currently serving at the BYU Family History Library. He has presented at expos and conferences around the U.S. and Canada. James has seven children and 33 grandchildren. So as it's load, um, just remind everyone there's a, a comments box up in the top right, and if you have any questions in the bottom right, you can write your questions in. We'll make sure all of those are answered by the end. So we'll turn the time over to James now and let him take it away for us. Howdy. This is James Tanner. I'm glad to be here again on another Brigham Young University Family History Library webinar. Uh, just remind everyone that these webinars are being uploaded to the BYU Family History Library YouTube channel. And if you uh, subscribe to our channel, you'll get notice of any new videos that are put up, assuming you let Google send you email. Okay, so we're going to talk about blogging and social networking for genealogists. As many of you know, and as Braden mentions in his introduction, uh, I've been blogging for quite a number of years. Um, first of all, we, of course, we need to know what is a blog. Uh, a blog... Uh, is a usually simple, usually a simple website. Uh, the word blog comes from web log, um, and there's a lot of history going back that many years before anybody ever called it a web log. But um, blogging has become um, fairly commercialized over the last few years. Usually, the the simple websites can be easy, are easy to maintain. Um, they're not like full blown websites with uh, developers and all the different types of uh, uh, background uh, scripts and things like that. It's uh, mainly a place where you can enter text and and images, and uh, you can make it as complex as you wish. If you do have a bent for uh, for programming, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about having that type of a website instead of just a, a simple blog. It's also published by some kind of online program or hosted by that program. A blogger is uh, a, a Google uh, program and WordPress is a, is a separate company. And those are the two most uh, popular formats for, for holding a blog. And they also host uh, millions of blogs, each of those two programs too. Um, and depending on the complexity of your design, uh, you can usually set up a blog in a matter of a few minutes. Uh, most of the, uh, the le early entry level type blogging, in, unless you elect to have a, a programmed website, is uh, are menu driven, where you simply choose a, a template, uh, get a title and things like that, and uh, you're off and running. You can enter your first blog post usually within about five to ten minutes if you're if you're familiar with uh, making choices. Now it can take you a lot longer if you're if you're trying to design something really different and if you uh, are kind of indecisive about all the things that you want to blog about. So. I mentioned about the commercial entries into the blogging business. Um, 
almost every company out there today probably has its own commercial blog in a sense uh, uh, sort of an online ongoing advertisement for the company um, initially many years ago the internet as it when it first started was uh, decidedly non-commercial in fact there was an uh, sort of an unstated but un uh, but enforced rule that no commercial enterprises were supposed to be on the internet well that broke down rather quickly as the internet began spreading away from its original US government origins and eventually uh, it, it had well has become the great uh, commercial uh, center that it is today uh, with online sales and and everything from uh, from health assistance through uh, you know dog grooming just about everything you can think of that you can either find online or uh, or learn about online um, and uh, and the other sense of this is that uh, we've got I mentioned the two different uh, kind of venues for blogging um, blogger is from Google and it is free in the sense that anything on the internet is free you have to have a computer you have to have connection to the internet you have to spend your time entering and putting in the information I mean, it's really not free in that sense but it is free in that there's no hosting cost and what happens with with a blogger as uh, can happen with some types of WordPress uh, blogs or websites uh, Google takes advantage of the bloggers by uh, paying them a, a very small amount of money for advertising that goes on their blog. So you can choose to have advertising on your blog or not. That's up to you. You're not compelled to have advertising for either blo either blogger or WordPress. One type, the free type of WordPress um, blogs do do not allow advertising, but you. If you pay for the website, then you can actually web, uh, advertise through the website. Um, blogging is uh, has kind of a precedent in in um, in that the uh, like YouTube videos uh, were when they started, and blogging when it started. Uh, a lot of people thought they were going to get real rich and real famous real fast with a blog. Well. Um, I don't even know if you could get rich and famous as uh, blogging about genealogy. That's uh, that's kind of a difficult topic to even breach. There's uh, in in genealogy, to be quite frankly, that Frank, there's only a very small number of bloggers who uh, I would guess even get any appreciable income out of their blogs. But overall, there are people who have made a considerable amount of money from blogging, and and I guess my uh, Council here at this point would be if you if you're intending to get rich and and wanting to make some uh, significant money off of your blog, I would suggest you choose something a little more uh, popular like food or sports or perhaps uh, you know how to get rich quick on business or whatever. Uh, there's other things that attract a lot more attention. Uh, obviously, if you're an entertainer uh, and you're quite famous, if you're on a movie star or a, or a uh, uh, you are some kind of a, of a celebrity, then your blog is probably going to be be very popular also. Now, Blogger is very simple to set up and maintain. Um, at, at various parts of my blogging history, I have considered moving over to WordPress, but usually what I end up deciding is that I want to spend more time writing and less time maintaining the website. So I elect to go stay with blogger and and it's pretty straightforward and quite simple um, and as I mentioned you can have a design and uh, and a blog up and running at a very very short time after you come up with some very specific things now as far as WordPress can, can uh, is concerned there's a an inst a website called wordpress.com this is the dot com site and it hosts free blogs and the limitation of course is that uh, there are um, limitations on them. Now, WordPress.org allows you to download uh, information and upload and whatever. WordPress and design and to download WordPress, you can download the whole program and design your own website. And then on WordPress.org, 
uh, you can have you have to have a subscription hosting service. So you you actually obtain the the programming and the background of the of the uh, web website or your blogging site from WordPress.org, and then you need to obtain a subscription hosting service like Bluehost. And Bluehost is one of the largest in the world. But there's uh, many, many places where you can go. The cost of a of a uh, online host uh, website, depending on your traffic and depending on the amount of storage capacity that you think you need for your for your website or blog, uh, can be very minimal, like five dollars a month or even uh, on a yearly annual fee basis. But um, in, uh, in in the difference here is that if you do get into that. Uh, WordPress.org, uh, you're going to have to be able to either hire someone to to create your blog website for you, or uh, and or maintain it, or do that yourself. So here's an example of a blogger-based uh, blog. This is Genealogy Star, which is the blog that I've had up for quite a number of years. Um, the design can be whatever you want. Uh, there are templates and be modified, uh, and photographs that you're your choosing can be used in the background or whatever you want to do. Uh, you can have it plain, you can have it simple, whatever uh, you choose. Uh, here's an example from uh, Dick Eastman and his uh, Eastman's online gene genealogy newsletter. He's probably been on online uh, with the blog on genealogy longer than anyone else um, that I'm aware of out there in the in the world. And this is a, a WordPress-based blog. Um, some people opt for this type of a blog because of the ability to uh, customize, uh, have special functions and features. Uh, uh, if you're actually in the process of selling something, if you uh, have a, a, an order and you wanted to sell a product or whatever, uh, it would you you need to have a, a programmed blog like this web, like a, a WordPress blog. Um, when I worked for a law firm down in Mesa, Arizona, uh, they had a rather elaborate website with a lot of different options, and it was all based on WordPress uh, programming. So it's a very flexible way of having a website. Now, it's not the only one. There are, um, I'm sure, uh, almost an unlimited number of different uh, bases for putting up webs uh, blogs and websites online of all levels of complexity. And uh, uh, But there are some very sophisticated, very complex websites that are based on WordPress, which is a uh, Basically, a computer language that's uh, uh, organized around the idea of, of building websites. And I need to remind you, if you do this, is that you will have to do some programming to use a WordPress.org blog. Um, it requires uh, the even the pre even the people who are involved in entering new information to go through a series of um, steps that involve uh, a a limited amount, not not an overwhelming amount, but a limited amount of um, programming. And if you're maintaining your, your, it yourself rather than paying someone to to maintain the blog, uh, the website blog itself, you really you really will have a, a sort of a considerable amount of uh, of expense. And it really only works for someone who has a uh, commercial enterprise and some kind of an income stream unless you just happen to have enough money or a lot of money and don't care about the cost of maintaining the website. Now, many people ask the question next about what about your own d domain name. Um, now, what we mean by that is that's the address that you'll have for, um, for, for having your blog online. In my case, uh, Genealogy Star, is, and since it remains a blogger blog, uh, the uh, the address is genealogystar.blogspot.com, uh, and the blogspot.com designation is the um, is the hosting organization. That's Google Blogger. Now, if you put it on your own domain, for example, and I'm using Bluehost, the, a very large hosting company, 
uh, as an example, if you were to put it on Bluehost, you would be uh, you would have to first purchase a domain uh, that can cost you anywhere from uh, a few dollars to a considerable amount of money if you were trying to buy a specific domain name and somebody owned it and, and uh, wanted to negotiate selling it. But uh, if you made up your own domain name, uh, it may cost you another a few dollars a year to to rent the domain from the uh, organization, international organization that controls uh, the way the domains uh, are are maintained on the internet. So if you do that, um, here's my uh, uh, wrapped around blog post, uh, genealogy startup blogspot. Now, if I were to go out and get my own domain name, then I could have it like Dick does, uh, Dick Eastman, and his is blog.eogn.com. Uh, so you could have almost anything you wanted to. And his domain, eogn.com, allows him to uh, set up his paid newsletter subscription service so that uh, he can have people on his website that uh, are subscribing to his newsletter. Now, the first question you've got to answer for yourself, and I think it's really the most important one, is what do you want to accomplish with your blog? Um, are you going to, are you interested in writing about your ancestors? Uh, is this a family uh, a communication device where you're putting up information uh, about a common ancestor or uh, one surname or uh, some kind of, uh, of tie-in, which ties in a group of your of your relatives into to being uh, on the blog. Uh, I might mention from my own own experience, and, and there are, are many other people with differences, uh, we maintain uh, a, uh, uh, a family blog that's aimed at uh, uh, information about our ancestors, and it's primarily and almost exclusively run by my daughter. And uh, it has been uh, very successful in in helping us to contact and maintain contact with remote family and, and distant family members. Um, okay, so that's the first option. Second one, are you interested in writing about genealogy in general, uh, just as a topic? Uh, and uh, if you are, then you need to decide what aspects of genealogy you're interested in and uh, uh, how you're going to maintain your interest in that over a period of time. Uh, it's kind of uh, very, very common uh, that uh, bloggers will begin the idea of, of writing a blog. They'll come up with a catchy title and, and start writing and then realize that, uh, A, they don't enjoy writing that much, and B, uh, it really gets to be hard to think up topics on any kind of a regular basis. So um, that's, that's kind of the limitation. And it's very helpful to uh, to begin to to make these kinds of decisions. Oh, now the second, the next one is: Do you have visions of making money from your blog? Well, you can make money from a blog simply by carrying advertising from Google. If you're on, if you have, if you have a Google blog and blogger, um, the pay is very low. Uh, I would guess that uh, the amount of money that I have made off of having Google ads on my blog is enough to pay for. Um, Probably a couple of movies and maybe uh, maybe a, a, a visit to an ice cream parlor once a year. <laughs> this is not what you would call a way to make a lot of money out of uh, out of blogging. So uh, I would guess that that is probably. Now here's the there's the big question you're asking. Okay, given what you've said. How do I make money with my blog? And I, I, th I think it's pretty simple. Number one, write about something very trendy or popular. Uh, that would be the first thing I think that would be very helpful. Um, uh, it, with anything like YouTube videos or uh, blogging or, uh, or anybody who has some kind of a promotional thing, uh, you really have to do something that, gets cat that catches on uh, and goes, as they say now, on the, in the very common phrase is that it goes viral. In other words, you get a, 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 an extraordinarily large number of, of people watching, reading, or, or clicking on your blog. 
Uh, let me remind everybody that genealogy is neither trendy nor popular. Um, one thing you'll hear commonly said uh, that is uh, simply unsubstantiated and impossible to, uh, to prove is that uh, people say over and over again that genealogy is the second most popular hobby in the United States and sometimes they'll say genealogy is so popular around the world. Well, if it's so popular, it certainly doesn't come out as being popular online because uh, one of the problems, uh, if you if you look at the statistics of, of how many people read uh, genealogy uh, blogs, for example, uh, very very few of them uh, are are into what you would call a reasonably substantially large range um, of a very small number, probably less than half a dozen bloggers in the world today uh, would get onto anybody's top 100 genealogy website list, much less on the greater and the greater uh, websites on the online of the millions and millions of websites. And unless you're selling something, don't expect to make money. I guess that's my uh, my biggest thing. Now, if you've got something that's worth selling, uh, even if it's a craft or whatever, you may very well want to um, uh, consider something like Etsy or or some of the other online craft stores, rather, or Amazon or whatever, rather than trying to uh, run an independent blog. Now, a blog can be an adjunct to a, a money-making business. Um, if you're running a store or if you have a home business or whatever, then, then I've seen many people run successful blogs to support their home businesses. Um, the first thing that I would do before I got on uh, online and started to try to, to uh, uh, design a blog or get, get busy writing would be to decide on a topic and a theme. Uh, this is really important. I mean, you have to have a topic and theme. Now, unfortunately for me, uh, I had a, a background. Well, it's not unfortunate in some senses, but of course I did have a background in Arizona. I uh, spent most of my life in Arizona. And one of the most popular newspapers in the state is the Tucson Daily Star. And uh, the star name is very common across the United States on news uh, articles and newspapers. Um, there are lots of newspapers, or have been in the past. Obviously, newspapers right now are uh, very much on the decline, but uh, paper newspapers. Uh, but that was uh, part of the idea that I thought, well, you know, I sort of want to be out there in front of everybody, leading them on. Uh, and uh, so I thought the title, Genealogy Star, was a good one. Obviously, after I got started, I realized the, that there were other uh, possible interpretations of the, uh, of the title. And uh, I've kind of regretted it ever since, but I was already committed and already had uh, quite a few readers before I decided it was not the best topic, the best title in the world. Although now it's pretty well recognized. and. Uh, uh, and I guess they still think I'm kind of weird because I think I'm some kind of star, but I don't, you know, I, there, I have a really interesting statement that I have. There's a, they're a very small town with about 50 people in it called Nutrioso, Arizona, and I've always said that being famous in genealogy is like being the mayor of Nutrioso. Now, there's no, nothing wrong with the mayor of Nutrioso. How, is there such a person exists? But uh, he's not very well known outside of his very small community. And that's sort of the same thing with uh, genealogy, by the way. So you should be passionate about your topic. You really do have to want to write about genealogy for a long time before you can be successful. And you have to have a lot to say. And you have to never run out uh, or get to the point where you, you have to agonize over uh, the topics that come along. Now, because I write a very broad uh, type of, of blog, then I uh, began a second genealogy blog uh, directed at a more restricted uh, audience. And in that case, my blog was, uh, was aimed at uh, genealogists who were uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or the LDS Church. And that one's called, I called Rejoice and Be Exceeding Glad. Uh, obviously, that title is so vague as to not have any associations whatsoever, except biblical associations, which, of course, is that's what I wanted it to have. So uh, how you're doing that, how you choose, and what you decide to do can, to the most extent, determine uh, how much information you put out there and how much time and effort you're going to put into it. 
you'll need to post regularly to have a popular blog. Um, now, when I say regularly, the, the top bloggers uh, who are out there, even in genealogy, the top bloggers in genealogy write today, uh, po post multiple posts in a week. And uh, some days, uh, one, uh, some days on occasion, none because of interference from other problems. But on many occasions, I've had uh, the bloggers post as many as three or four or even five posts in a day. And uh, on the average over a year, uh, the number of blog posts for, uh, the, from the more popular bloggers uh, will exceed 365. In other words, there's no vacations, no stopping, nothing. Uh, by the end of the year, they will have posted more blogs than there are days. Um, that means that there is a steady stream of information coming out. And, and uh, in, in essence, what happens is that some articles that are written, they're called posts, some of the posts that come off, the, off your blog may be bombs. Maybe nobody in the world is, even cares about the topic or bothers to read it. But on the next one, you may hit it out of the stadium. In other words, you may find something that everybody's interested in. And the numbers will vary just um, almost incredibly from one blog post to another, uh, depending on the topic and depending on whether it catches the eye of, of the genealogy public. You need to be able to write very well. Now, this doesn't sound like, uh, this sounds like I'm telling you go back to school, and the answer is I am. Uh, in order for you to, uh, to become uh, quite successful, not only do you have to like to write or love to write, or writing doesn't have to be a chore for you, but you have to really know how to, how to form words. And uh, um, you have, and in some cases, if you're, not, uh, if you're not proficient and your grammar isn't that good, you're, you're, you're you know, not writing according to uh, uh, what would be accepted as a, uh, as a topic in a school, like if you're writing essays for school or whatever, if you can't come up to that level, then you're going to have a, you are going to have a difficult time um, being popular in the genealogy market. One of the things you do have to remember when you're looking for a blog is who are you writing to? What, what is your intended audience? And in genealogy, you're writing to more well uh, people with a greater amount of education who are generally older and who have um, uh, an interest in a lot of different topics and history and other things that uh, you'll need to know about. And I might mention that um, uh, on to being my, as a blogger, I write as many, including all of the publications, all of the writing and everything that I do, oh, on the average, about 25,000 to 30,000 words a week. Now, if you cringe when your teacher in school gave you a 500-word essay to write and you thought that was a burden, then I would suggest you figure out some other way to spend your time besides writing a blog. Uh, most people wonder if I sleep, and a lot of people wonder how in the world I can continue to, to write and come up with these topics. And the answer is, uh, for me, it is not, uh, not difficult. Uh, if I sit down at the, at the computer to write, I either already have a number of blogging post ideas for that day, or within a matter of just a few minutes of, of searching the news or looking at, uh, at websites or something, I will have a topic for my blog. And you can probably tell when I'm half asleep when I've written it, because uh, some of the stuff I write uh, probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but let's say. So, and, and, and like I mentioned just a moment ago, make sure you like your blog title because after you've lived with it for a few years, you may decide that you really made a mistake in calling that, uh, the blog that, and then you're stuck with it because you have a new blog. And you can start another blog and compete with yourself. Um, you know, basically, uh, sometimes I feel that the uh, Rejoice blog is competing with Genealogy Star. But, uh, uh, and keeping them both going has been a, an interesting uh, um, interest institution. And, and by the way, there is a third blog out there besides the one written by my daughter, and that's one called walkingarizona.blogspot.com. Uh, and Walking Arizona is uh, purely uh, photography. That's purely pictures, and that happens to be my other passion, is taking pictures. So um, be, 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 
between genealogy and photography. Um, actually, my photography rate's much higher than my uh, in uh, in ranking for people like on LinkedIn. Uh, more people have, have uh, uh, posted me for photography as being my major thing in life uh, than even genealogy or blogging or anything. So uh, you never know what's going to happen out there when you start to put your ideas out online. And I guess my what I'm really trying to say is you really have to love to write. Uh, you, this is the whole key of this thing. It's a communication thing. And it, it just takes time and it takes effort. And sometimes you have to just get up and go to work and start writing. Um, I, uh, you know, from my own standpoint, I get up early. Uh, I sometimes get up at uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, not that often, but I do. And uh, some days, used, most of the days, almost all days, I'm uh, already at the computer writing by 6 a.m. here, Mountain Daylight Time. And uh, um, I usually am finished writing uh, on an average day, including the presentations and other things that I'm doing, somewhere around uh, 7 to 8 o'clock at night. Uh, depending on the day and how much stuff I've got to do, and sometimes I, I just can't do, I can't take it. I just knock off early, like at six in the evening after only twelve hours of writing. So you know, it's not, uh, it's not, it's a, high, it's, it's not, let's like, like having a full time job. It's not, it is, it's not just something you do once in a while. Now, let's all that given, uh, you know. Uh, the, I hear coming the, the ideas coming back out of the uh, out of the vibrations of the network that come to me that say, and by the way, nobody wants to be like you. And my answer is that's fine. But I'm saying here is that uh, a casual blog may be the greatest thing that happened to you as far as genealogy and communicating with your family and your larger online family. But if you're moving, trying to move towards being a uh, somebody who is known in the blogging community and such, or or, or someone who uh, uh, is an influential person, you really do have to spend a lot of time doing it. Now, blogging is a form of social networking, most re most uh, certainly, and so what we're doing here is communicating, and there are lots of ways to communicate, and. Some of the benefits of being involved uh, with a blog is that you may meet a lot of people. Now, I, when I started blogging out of um, my office in my home uh, down in Mesa, Arizona, uh, I had absolutely no idea that uh, by writing a blog from my home each day that my life would be completely changed, that everything that happened to me a vast number of things that have happened to me since the time I started writing a blog have been as a direct result of that effort that I put down to write and to come up with things to say. And I've met a whole lot of really nice, really wonderful people. By, the, by and large, genealogists are some of the nicest group of people that you'll ever get acquainted with. And so if you didn't have any other reason for getting a blog, I would suggest that uh, that writing out a blog each day will get you uh, an opportunity to meet and to be associated with just a, a wonderful group of, of very, very interesting and very, uh, very nice people around the world. And interestingly enough, you may make friends all over the world. Uh, I certainly have. I have. Uh, I have friends in uh, in lots of different places from around the world, from uh, Israel and from uh, uh, England and Ireland and from uh, all over uh, Canada, all over the United States. Uh, many of whom in Australia. Um, many of the people that I've uh, become friends with and know, and even communicate with on a on a more than regular on a very regular basis. Are, uh, are some of them I have never met in person in my life, and I may never meet them, but I have. Um, but they are certainly uh, friends in the sense that we can communicate and talk and discuss things that uh, of which we have mutual interest. Now, here's the big thing: remember everything you say in your blog once you hit that post thing that says uh, publish it. Uh, 
uh, or post it, you're saying to the entire world. And as I have felt over the last couple of years, it feels like to me like I'm carrying on a conversation with the world. And it's a very interesting conversation and it seems to never end and it just goes on and on with all these different topics and things. So this is a, you know, this is a very thing. And another point about it is that genealogy is about the least controversial topic that you could possibly choose to write about. Uh, there's almost nothing out there that, that even verges on anything like controversy. The closest thing we have is, is when we're faced with the destruction of some re uh, record repository or archive, and then it kind of gets exciting, but that's uh, not really a whole lot of excitement in the world. Okay, so here's some of the popular formats or the popular blogs. Um, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, as I mentioned, is my uh, LDS church-oriented blog. Uh, I write uh, most of my posts uh, are comments on or directed to people using FamilySearch.org, uh, the FamilySearch.org website. Uh, because that is the uh, indirectly church-sponsored red site through the organization called Family Search International. And uh, it's been a quite interesting to, uh, to become involved in that particular blog um, and, uh, and, and see the effect it's had. Uh, this is our family blog called the ancestorfiles.blogspot.com. And... Uh, basically maintained by my daughter, and she is a professional writer and a professional historian. And so this is a very, um, very um, source-oriented, extremely well-documented, and uh, uh, very well-done website. And I, uh, even if I weren't related to my daughter, which I am, uh, I would uh, think that this was one of the most, uh, one of the best examples of a family-centered blog, um, and even if it is an extended family on all lines, so there's not just one surname. It's it's literally uh, dozens and dozens of surnames here. Uh, this is one from a friend of mine, Randy Seaver, who lives down San Diego way, and uh, he is one of the top bloggers in the world, um, in, in on anybody's list. And he publishes even more prolifically than I do, much more in some cases than I do, and probably averages 10 or 12 uh, or more blog posts a week. Um, and he is continually interesting and uh, extremely well, uh, well received by a huge, huge number of people. He, he ranks right up there near the top of anybody's list of bloggers out there in the world. I already mentioned, by the way, Dick Eastman, who's been out there for uh, uh, longer than anyone else, and who is uh, recognized uh, not only by the fact that, that most of the genealogical com community recognizes him as the lead blogger, but he is also recognized by the fact that he gets the highest number of hits on his websites of any of the bloggers that we're aware of out there. Here's another one. This is the Olive Tree uh, Genealogy website. Uh, an extremely um, uh, popular, um, and it is one of the ones that of Lorene, it's Loreen McGinnis, and Loreen has been doing this forever, since 1996. Uh, and um, she has an extensive website here that has a lot of records and other items. So this is more than just a blog. This is really a whole website full of information and um uh, and other things that are useful to uh, to, to uh, genealogists. And then we have Jill Ball down there in Australia, and she's also uh, easily the most popular genealogist in Australia. And beyond that, she's uh, very popular in the United States and maintains a number of blogs. Uh, and uh, Genios is one of those. And she is uh, uh, very, very well known. And uh, we meet and see each other for uh, very short periods of time, actually, because we're so busy, both of us, at Roots Tech. But uh, it's always fun to see her every year that she's been able to come up from Australia. That She should be commended by uh, her endurance and being able to take a 16-hour uh, airline flight just to come to a, to a genealogy conference. But anyway, that's wonderful for her. 
Um, uh, and as I've mentioned, world-class bloggers, people who are known uh, out, uh, even known uh, in, uh, uh, let's say few of us are known outside of the genealogical community, that's for sure, but uh, that are almost what you would consider even well-known within the genealogical community, blog uh, every day and sometimes multiple times a day. And if they're going to stop blogging for a period of time, they usually send out some notice to their readers of, of the reason for it or may employ uh, guest bloggers to take up the slack uh, and have people to come on. I recently uh, began a post from uh, a guest blogging uh, a guest blogger, and it, it turns out to be quite successful. So that might happen again in the future. So let's just look at the numbers. As of December 2016, I have written over 9,000 blog posts since I started. Uh, that comes out, if you just said that was one page sheet, that would be 9,000 pages of, uh, of information. That's, uh, that's not bad. Uh, it's not like I was turning out uh, encyclopedias or anything, but it's uh, it's a lot of information, and uh, they're all out there. They're all still online. They're all searchable, and uh, and you can uh, and it. Uh, a lot of people still are reading some of the older older posts, some of which I should take down because uh, they're really out of date. But um, and you need to understand that some of the other genealogy bloggers have written a lot more than I have. That's uh, not anywhere near the, the, the high point number of, the, of, of posts that someone would have in a year. And I might mention that blogging can be a full-time job. Some of you would consider as much hours as I spend writing to be a full-time job, but I really view this as something that I do in uh, with other things. Um, I spend a lot more time actually teaching classes and, and preparing presentations than I do uh, blogging. So that's what I do. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention all this is without pay. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not getting, most of us are not getting paid. There are some of us who do make a living off of it, but they're few and far between. Now let's go on to social networking. Um, uh, it, once again, Genealogy Star is a social networking site. And you might notice, uh, and some people view the fact that I'm very active in social networking because everything I write is also posted on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. So uh, as soon as I post my blog, uh, there are reposting programs that you can subscribe to that will, uh, or distributing programs that will distribute out your uh, blog posts to various social networking sites. So most of the people uh, I meet uh, in a sort of a social context who aren't in the, in the blogging uh, genealogy community, community always comment about the fact that I'm on Facebook all the time. Uh, you know, uh, not nearly as much as some of my relatives, however. Uh, I have a feeling some of them uh, are get up in the morning and start posting on Facebook and never quit all day long. But uh, and the other, and from another standpoint, though, that I, uh, this does give me a, a rather extensive social networking back uh, presence. Now, YouTube.com is a social networking site. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you can describe it as anything else. Uh, however, it is also a, a, a major website now for producing videos, uh, commercial and, and intended to be commercial videos, along with all the entertainment and, and whatever else. Uh, so people are out there selling things, selling products, selling services, as well as uh, trying to entertain. And of course, there's always the people who are out there trying to be, uh, uh, become viral and uh, simply have their, their video go uh, so millions of people uh, are watching their video for whatever it is. You know, uh, funny cats, uh, dogs, and things like that have a high ranking on uh, YouTube. Uh, I don't think our YouTube has gotten quite up to the funny cats and the babies yet, but uh, there's possibility. Now, we do have, and I'm involved very heavily, as this webinar indicates, in the BYU Family History Library YouTube channel. 
And so we have now posted about 200 and between 225 and 230 videos, depending on which day it is. And um, it is uh, for, by the way, for a library, this is quite a, a this is quite a breakthrough. Um, there aren't too many libraries out there that are that are kind of getting anywhere with video on YouTube. Uh, but uh, uh, this is just one kind of thing that you could do, and you can actually do a video blog. And there are uh, people who uh, who maintain uh, almost a daily posting of video uh, on a, a, from a blogging standpoint. Probably uh, some of the more popular people out there on YouTube uh, uh, have posted quite frequently. I mention this too, nearly every uh, genealogy company and organization has their own YouTube channel. So if you look for Ancestry or Family Search or uh, My Heritage or Find My Past or any of the other companies involved, uh, lots of other companies out there, you'll find a YouTube channel almost uh, for every one of those. Now, of course, the uh, you know elephant in the room is Facebook. Uh, Facebook uh, became uh, and has maintained its position as the most popular social networking program in the world. Uh, by the way, there are some Chinese language uh, blogs that come close to Facebook, just simply by the fact that there's such a huge number of people in China. Uh, so for numbers, though, worldwide, Facebook is uh, uh, easily the most popular of all of the social media. Um, uh, Facebook is uh, an interesting phenomena. Um, uh, of course, many of the social conventions in the United States have gone the wayside as Facebook has taken over. People now make uh, wedding announcements, baby announcements, uh, uh, talk about people dying and and uh, virtually hold funerals on Facebook. So, you know, this is not uh, it's it's become a worldwide phenomena, um, and, and it's helpful to be uh, to have a presence in, in any social networking. It all feeds on itself. Uh, uh, you may say, well, Google Plus isn't very popular. I don't need to do that. I'll say, well, yeah, but it's there. Now, what about all the rest, you say? There's lots of other social networking outlets. And, and uh, that's true. There are. And uh, having a, a presence on those. But you need to evaluate also who is, uh, where are the genealogists? Where are the people who are, are doing genealogy? If you're, if you're into some of these other alternative, brand new uh, social networking sites out there and you and your friends, your question, I guess, to ask is, is are the genealogists on that uh, venue? Because uh, if they're not, then you're not going to get much traffic out of it. Um, then there's Facebook.com, and they have memorial pages. So if you have someone who, who dies and you want to keep track of them, you can create a page. Now, this works perfectly for genealogists because we can create memorial pages for our uh, surname ancestors or our famous ancestors or whatever, however we want to do this. And then we can uh, organize uh, reunions and do just about everything else uh, that's involved with communication over Facebook. So this is called a memorial page. And you can create one for a person who is deceased so that they are remembered. Um, this is a, a organizational site on Facebook all of in addition to having YouTube channels all of the major genealogical uh, companies and associations have uh, Facebook pages so you'll have Facebook pages for the uh, uh, National Genealogical Society and for the Federation of Genealogical Societies FGS and for uh, uh, Roots Tech and for Family Search and for My Heritage and uh, Ancestry and and Find My Past and Fold Three and you name it, there's probably a you pay, a Facebook page out there for that uh, particular organization. I happen to have a Facebook page for Genealogy Star, as well as a uh, a page for uh, Google Plus. Uh, Twitter is uh, an interesting venue. Uh, of course, your tweets are limited to at 140 characters uh, in each tweet, but now they incorporate 
uh, video and and uh, fo and photos and and other uploads as well as uh, the short tweets. Um, Twitter is uh, uh, just as, as an interesting place. Um, obviously, in the most recent elections here in the United States, uh, Twitter held uh, kept a, a, a prominent position in what was going on during the campaign. Uh, Google Plus. Um, it is not it decidedly not a Facebook. It is a, a different uh, venue. Um, uh, it is not as used as Facebook. Uh, certainly, it certainly comes in a far distant uh, behind, even be probably behind with Twitter and Instagram now, uh, which, by the way, is owned by Facebook. And um, so, what we have here is a, uh, a sort of an alternative. Uh, one of the advantages of Google Plus or Google is that uh, they used to have what were called Hangouts, and now it's a separate program uh, called Google Hangouts. But it's a, um, a, a direct video uh, connection across computer um, platforms and uh, device platforms uh, where you can talk to people directly. They've created a new thing where you can actually hold a webinar online using a Google Hangout, um, and that's um, another thing you might want to investigate. Um, Instagram is uh, kind of, of the fast upcoming uh, star of the, uh, of the uh, social networking world. Um, in Instagram, uh, in, at one point in time, with my seven children, uh, we probably collectively had 35 or more blogs that were being maintained. And I guess we're probably down to about less than six, maybe seven, six or seven. And that I attribute to the immediacy and the photos that can be put up constantly on Instagram. Because all of my family and all of my other acquaintances that I'm aware of have moved uh, almost entirely to Instagram for uh, their day-to-day -day communications. Uh, my wife is involved very much in Instagram and uh, has discovered through her iPhone that she can dictate uh, the text both for, for um, texting and for uh, Instagram. So uh, rather than sit there and try to punch the little tiny keyboard, she just turns it on dictation mode and, and dictates. Uh, you get some pretty funny results on res on occasion if you don't proofread what you've said, but uh, it's uh, it's one way of getting into the Instagram and other markets. Pinterest, it, it, Pinterest is not uh, is a very very uh, highly used. In fact, my, the number of of um, of hits that I get uh, every month or or visits I get to my Pinterest site every month is uh, is fairly substantial. Um, but uh, it is a uh, generally kind of a collective where you go in and collect uh, video, I mean, uh, uh, photo, photos and, and images from various websites. But it's used for commercial purposes now. There's advertising that goes on. Um, there's uh, a lot of things. And people can go here for uh, a, a visual reference on certain things, for example, um, if you want to redesign your kitchen, you go in here and look at all the different redesigned kitchens and decide what's trendy and what's new and how you're going to make your kitchen look. So this is uh, this is an interesting website. I have a, a, an Instagram, I mean, excuse me, a Pinterest account, and it's uh, it's fairly po pro um, uh, popular. And I also maintain part of that as a genealogy uh, board on uh, on Pinterest. Um, I, I failed to mention that my Instagram account, as far as I'm can personally, I've used that to to uh, monitor my family, and uh, rather than opening it up to big public and having a lot of uh, subscribers on Instagram, uh, that's kind of my only way of communicating more uh, directly with my my uh, children and grandchildren. Now LinkedIn has come in. Um, of course, LinkedIn was was purchased by uh, I, yeah it was Microsoft. So Microsoft owns LinkedIn. Um, the problem, uh, you know, what 
first of all, it was created for, by the idea of being able to have a place to post your resume uh, on the possibility that you might uh, get a job or that you're, if you need to change uh, a bit, uh, occupations that you'd have a, a sort of a way to move sideways on that. Um, and there's a lot of people out there. Uh, I think I spend, uh, I get uh, a significant number of invitations to connect with people on LinkedIn almost every week. And uh, I, I really don't even have a number any, or any idea in my head how many impressions or how many people I am connected with on LinkedIn. Seems like I've connected probably three or four this week and probably will keep connecting them. Um, it's a it's a fairly interesting way to find out about people uh, in a commercial business way. Uh, I've been surprised uh, to be able to keep up with with what's happened with the movements. A lot of the lawyers that I knew when I was practicing law, I can say, oh, I can find out where they're they are now and things like that. So it's been a very it's a very interesting website. There are uh, there is a professional level which has has a subscription cost. If you pay the subscription, then you get certain uh, a lot of other uh, services out of the program. So it, it has a commercial aspect to it. Um, you can have a lot of fun with your blog. Uh, this is my uh, Walking Arizona blog, and it's always been interesting to have uh, uh, these photos online and. Uh, uh, be able to run through and show people the photos. In fact, that lower right-hand corner photo there of Barrow Beach, I, I used as a, a closing photo on my uh, um, recent, the most recent blog that I had, uh, webinar that I posted here at BYU Family History Library. What are some of the genealogical benefits of social networking? Well, it, it works in a very direct way to uh, to support and help uh, your research and, and gathering of genealogical data. Um, first of all, you can make friends and influence people. Well, in the sense that uh, you are out there connecting to the world and enabling your relatives to contact you. The Ancestor Files blog that uh, is maintained by my daughter has been the way to facilitate obtaining copies of documents from other relatives who uh, would never have known we existed had it not been for the blog, and uh, also to start conversations and to meet with and actually interact with relatives that I have uh, that I own, that I did not even know I had. In other words, they were people that uh, uh, I didn't know uh, at all. I had not really focused on. And yet they turn out to be uh, related very directly to some of my, uh, my ancestors that I'm more aware of. So it is really a basis for going ahead and making relatives. And of course, you discover new relatives all the time. There is a, a vast number of people out there that, that social net, networking touches. And so you have a, a very high percentage activity. I think that if you were uh, feeling at all limited or isolated in your genealogical pursuits that you should be online because then you'll find those people who will share your interest in the in the topic. And as I mentioned, we find family treasures of documents and photos. It's it's my, uh, you know, some of the larger collections of, of photographs and of, uh, of other documents that I've had to come to me over the years have come as a direct result of us being online. When I say us, I mean my family and me and my, uh, like my daughter. And um, that, as a result of that online presence, we have been able to find people that otherwise we would not have been uh, exposed to at all. Now, what about reading all those blogs? Uh, I subscribe to almost 300 blogs uh, a day. Uh, that means that I get uh, a list of anywhere. If I if I don't keep up with this, I will quickly have um, anywhere between three and five hundred blog posts. And if I go on a vacation, I can have thousands of blog posts left in my in my list by the time I return. I use a reader program. In this case, I use Dig Reader. I've changed this over the years as I've uh, as some of them have gone out of business or or been uh, 
converted to other uh, to commercial websites or pay sites. Uh, a dig reader is what's called a news aggregator. In other words, it takes content from other websites and then posts it here in the form of, uh, of a short blurb like a title on a newscast uh, or a news article. And so each day I get a list of blog titles like this, um, just to show on the page. It's just uh, no graphics, nothing, just a long list of titles. And then I can read through those titles in a matter of just a few minutes. And uh, quite frankly, I go through my email in about the same way. But uh, in this way, I can control it. I subscribe to blogs. As I subscribe to new blogs, I add them here to my uh, reader. Uh, the old blogs that aren't functional or if people stop writing, that doesn't really bother me well in the sense of trying to keep track of it because they just simply don't post and so they don't ever show up. Uh, I can still subscribe and a, and a few of them come back online after a while and they say, oh, we were gone for a while and, and uh, yes, uh, then I'm right there back with, uh, with their content. Uh, this is one way of finding out a lot of information about what's going on in the in the genealogical community. Uh, by no means are all of these genealogy blogs. Uh, I also re uh, blog, uh, uh, subscribe to a lot of uh, news news blogs that are just news, like C C uh, CNET and some of these others. And, and technology outlets and uh, uh, just kind of a general variety of things. So it's digcom.com reader. It's fairly simple. You, you just simply just uh, open up an account. You create a page for storing your, uh, your subscriptions and you just use their procedure, which is uh, basically adding a URL to their search list, confirming that they found the blog and then you're you are then, or the the uh, website, and then any changes that are made to that website after that will show up here in your list of, of uh, subscriptions. Okay, well, we thank you for watching today. That was, uh, we're here from the uh, Brigham Young University Family History Library, and remind you all that these webinars are posted uh, along with our live webinar schedule on the BYU Family History website and also on the BYU Family History Library YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you very much, James, for the wonderful webinar. It's um, definitely good to get out there and have a presence so people can get to know you. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to write those in for us. Um, We'd love to have your feedback. We have a little feedback pod on the bottom right-hand corner. Tell us what you thought about today's webinar or how we can improve our webinars in general. Um, and feel free to join us next time. We will have our next webinar on Tuesday, as I said at the beginning, and we will see you then.